guys, it's Jen again. In this video, we're going to talk about how to spread large winged insects. Whenever you're pinning something with large wings that you want to spread the wings out, you need to have something like this. This is a pre-cut piece of styrofoam. Um, the body of the insect, probably a butterfly or a dragonfly or something like that, will fit down in this groove and the wings get spread out to the side. Um, you can also just take a regular piece of styrofoam like this and you could take a knife and cut a groove into it depending on the body size of what you want to spread. Um, but the, the point is that the body needs to be able to be a bit lower than the rest of the surface so that the wings are not uh, like slanted downward when you spread them. In order to spread the wings of a butterfly or a dragonfly, you need to cut some strips of paper. Um, the length and the width of the paper really depends on the size of the insect you're spreading and the size of the wings. So these are ones that I will be using to spread a luna moth. And so that's quite a large, quite a large moth. And um, you'll kind of be able to judge for yourself how big your pieces of paper should be. Uh, the whole point is that you want the paper to be wider than the wing because as you'll see, when we put the pins in the paper, we don't want the pins to actually pierce the wings because this will damage the wings. Okay, so before we can talk about how to spread the wings of a moth or butterfly um, or other large winged insect, we need to first talk about how we pin them. So for moths and butterflies, you can see these guys have pins straight down through the body. And this needs to be done first before we spread the wings because you need at least one pin holding the insect in place while you're trying to spread the wings out. Otherwise, it's just gonna move around a lot and be really frustrating. So when we pin moths and butterflies, um, the pin should go straight down through the body uh, through the thorax actually, uh, and be perpendicular to the body. So these moths are actually all ready to have their wings spread. Um, but pinning is the first step before we do any wing spreading. So you may want to use forceps to do this, especially if the wings are laying flat against each other, unlike the configuration of these moths. Just be Careful not to touch the wings with your fingers, use forceps or something similar to tease them to the side so you can get the pin in there. Once this is done, then we can start to spread the wings. Okay, so when you're ready to spread the wings of something with large wings, you wanna put it on a board like this. If you're working with Lepidoptera, it's really important that you don't actually touch the wings with your fingers. You should use forceps or something else because we have oils on our fingers that can actually pull off the scales from Lepidoptera wings and the scales on the wings are where they get their color from. So you may notice that if you touch Lepidoptera wings with your fingers, you get what looks like dust coming off, but it's actually the scales that give the wings the color. So we don't wanna to touch it with our hands. In order to spread Lepidoptera wings, you should do it very carefully um, so as not to rip them, but you just want to lay them down flat and spread them so you can see them well. Once you've laid them down, you put down a piece of paper and you're going to pin on either side of the paper but not actually in the wing. So make sure that those pins are not going into the wing. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. One thing to be careful of is for aesthetics, you want the wings to ideally be the same height. So we don't want one wing much higher than the other. So we wanna try and get these even on either side. Now for this moth, um, 
I don't actually need to do anything with the back wings because they're already in a good position so I can just leave those alone. But for some insects you may you may need to use more pieces of paper, more pins. It depends on how um, unnatural looking the insect is when you start to spread it. If the wings are very mangled and need a lot of readjusting to get it to look nice when it dries, um, then you may need to use more pieces of paper and pins to hold it in place. When you spread something like this, it's important to make sure that you let the insect fully dry before you take the papers and pins off. There's nothing worse than spreading a beautiful moth or butterfly and then taking the paper off too early and seeing the wings kind of go back. Um, you want it to stay like this once you take the pins and paper off. So I would say a minimum of two or three days, but personally, I would leave this guy for about a week before I would consider taking the paper off because again, I want to be absolutely sure that it's had adequate time to dry and that it's gonna stay in this position when I take the, the paper and the pins off. All right, so just two more quick points before we wrap this up. If you have a moth or butterfly that's smaller than a quarter, you absolutely do not need to try and spread the wings. It's actually quite difficult. And if you have something very small, it's totally fine if you just put a pin in it and be done with it. The last point is regarding the height of the wings. Like how high should you spread the wings of a moth or butterfly? The short answer is it depends. It depends on what the species of the moth or butterfly is. As you can see here, different species hold their wings at different heights. So you can consult D2L for some examples of um, images of different uh, pinned and spread moths and butterflies in order to try and get an idea of how high the wings for your particular specimen can or should go. All right, so that is how to spread large winged insects.